Okay, everyone. Welcome to week four. <clears throat> These pop ups. Uh, so, in week four, well, let's talk, let's recap the past few weeks here. So, what I hope you've learned so far is that there's a lot of importance in being creative and thinking beyond uh, the proverbial box. I hate to use that term, but. Um, anyway, it's relevant in this particular situation. Remember, creativity is very important when it comes to innovations, need to be entrepreneurship or to build your organization as an employee. It doesn't make a difference either way. So it's important for us to be very creative and innovative. And sometimes in the work world, that doesn't work out as well as we'd like to. Uh, but still, I think a lot of great results have come from creative thinking critical thinking, and really looking at details. So by now, you should have your business nailed down, exactly what you're going to do, and your executive summary should be submitted, or at least this is Sunday when it's due today, so we can move forward. So um, as we move on, there's a few points I want to make here. Uh, so in week four, we're going to talk a little bit about the external analysis. So what industry are you entering? Is it toys? Is it entertainment? Is it food? Whatever it may be, be very clear about that industry. And from this, you once again should always look around for your targeted market. Um, for some of you, I gave you feedback in your week one assignment about, hey, Benchmark off this organization, if I could think of something, and we'll talk about more of that in class or if I'm teaching this online in the future in the discussion boards. But either way, the idea here is that you should know your market industry. You should know what they do well, maybe a gap, and then what you do in your business is fill that gap. And that's how you can differentiate yourself from the competition. Uh, so it's really important to know the industry and know it well. So as far as your target customers, and we talked about this, the number one issue that I've experienced with students over the years was that they say, oh, this product or service is for everyone. No. Who's most likely to buy your product and, or your service? So you want to really hyper-focus on that. The idea is that 20% of your customers will produce 80% of your profit. It's the 80-20 principle. So, for instance, we talked in class, or you know, for future students, if I use this recording again, we had talked in class about different products such as uh, Lululemon. I keep calling it Lululemon, but, uh, you know, like, well, that was women's outfits. And I remember years ago, grad students telling me, oh, they should do a brand for men. I'm like, I don't know if that'll work out. Lo and behold, I was wrong. Apparently, they have stuff for men. Um, but I still think their target market may be women in that particular situation. And what age group, you know, you got to look at things like that. That's fine. Either way. How about Starbucks? At this stage of my life, I could care less whether or not I have Starbucks. Uh, I don't care about the logo. I just want a good cup of coffee I can make at home. But at the same time, there's a targeted market with Starbucks. I would venture, especially the younger crowd, it's kind of a thing, you know, status thing uh, to go to Starbucks and all that. Um, maybe individuals in their 20s, something along those lines. So if you're working in, a, you know, running a coffee shop, I would look at the target customers for Starbucks. It's out there. So anyway, you see what we're doing here. There's individuals, certain demographics, they're more likely than not to subscribe to your service, buy your products, uh, you know, or what have. So anyway, you want to look at the competitors. That's called an external analysis and analyze your competitors to see what they do, uh, what their profit margins are, if they're publicly traded or at least if it's public. And, uh, you know, we have to be very careful with the four P's product. You really know your product well. Promotion. How are you going to promote it? Promote it. Price. Do you have a competitive price structure or at least justify the price because you're adding value to that product or service and place? 
And the idea is where are you targeting? And even in an e-business, you want to make sure that you're marketing towards that targeted population and you can do that. So, uh, you know, maybe it's through social media. Um, I don't know how it works with TikTok. Uh, you are, some of you already heard my thoughts about TikTok. I'm a little worried about that. But like, you know, Facebook, Instagram, whatever other social media outlets they have out there. So, um, and then you want to look at your competitive advantage. So let me explain competitive advantage just in case you've forgotten or haven't encountered it yet in your education. Competitive advantage largely has to do with someone's capability to have more of a product. So let's look at, for instance, I don't know, say you wanted to start your own coffee company, roast your own beans, make your own coffee, and say like it's a place like in Camp Hill or near Camp Hill in Pennsylvania around here. It's a smaller store. So they don't have the competitive advantage over Folgers, which uh, has more coffee, more money, more ability to produce, more ability to market throughout all the, uh, the stores and, you know, the giant supermarkets and the like. So you will not have what they call the competitive advantage, but what you can have, so they call the comparative advantage, which means that, oh, yeah, although I can't produce like Folgers, uh, I can still produce smaller amounts and higher quality. So that would be comparative. It's more about comparative versus competitive. Yes, you can get more coffee through Folgers, but better tasting coffee. And it comes with a higher price, mind you. You have what they call a comparative advantage. This cup of coffee is from that that military coffee, death punch or whatever. Actually, it's a combination of uh, death punch coffee and uh, what I left over from the fall with the pumpkin coffee that I bought from a small coffee place in the local area. That's pretty good. So, again, this is more of a comparative. They're not going to be able to compete against the big dogs necessarily, but they surely will chip away at their market a little bit. Because I'm not having folders. I won't drink coffee. If I'm going to have a cup of coffee, I'm going to have a good cup of coffee. Not, you know, just, you know, coffee for coffee's sake. So, again, that's just an example. So, now you understand the difference between competitive advantage and comparative. So, this week I want you to complete the company description portion. So, write a clear and concise mission statement. I'll help you with it. No problem. Who's in your company? Principal members, those who are responsible for running the business. If it's just you, that's fine. And we're also going to talk about the different types of corporations, limited liability, S-Corp, sole proprietorship as examples. Most individuals will do an LLC or what they call a limited liability corporation. And the reason why it protects your personal assets from the company. So if something were to happen there was a, where you got sued, they can't sue you and your personal assets. So they can only go after your company and your company has to have liquid for them to really absorb it. So there's different tricks I'll talk to you about, but there are ways to go ahead and say, all right, I have an LLC here. I started this LLC. I'm creating another company, another LLC. And as part of funding that company, I'm going to go ahead and transfer the profits or some of them over to the LLC the other LLC, which is not affiliated with this LLC. And then, you know, you can always take the money and put it in your account, quote unquote, pay yourself. So, but either way, you would have insurance anyway. So probably not an issue, but uh, the idea is they can't come after your personal property. There's all kinds of sneaky things you can do. Like if you have kids, even if they're like eight, you can employ them because it's your small business. You know, they could be washing the car. Oh, you know, I'm going to pay them. And then that could be uh, something towards your LLC. Could be a write-off. That gets really difficult, though. You would need an accountant for that, not me. So uh, limited liability is generally the uh, chosen one to protect your personal assets from uh, being under attack because of the lawsuit. So uh, sole proprietorships 
are a little bit more riskier because then you don't have that protection as an idea. So we'll talk about that. I would venture that most of you would probably choose limited liability corporations. And so we'll talk about that. But uh, anyway, be very clear and concise with your mission statement. Uh, identify the principal members of the company and feel free to describe what it is that you will be doing products, services that you'll be offering in great detail. That way, once you write it down, you have a clearer idea of what you're doing with your business. Well, that's all for now. I will see you in class.